Hi, I'm David Harry, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to modify your Zcam E1 so you can have a cold chill on the top of it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna to have to make perfectly clear, what I'm about to do quite possibly will invalidate the warranty for the Zcam E1. So if you plan on doing this yourself, just make sure first that either your Zcam E1 is out of warranty and you don't mind doing this modification, or two, maybe get in touch with the people where you bought it from and ask them, is it okay to affix something to the body? Because technically we're not getting inside the camera and altering anything. So I can't say for sure whether right now this will invalidate the warranty. But from my point of view, I'm just gonna do it anyway because this has become a massive workhorse for me and I desperately need a shoe mount on top. So with them warnings out of the way, let me dive straight into the how-to. And then what I'm going to do after that is show a few examples of why I want to do this. So here's the top of the E1. And also here is the cold shoe mount that I'm going to be putting on. Now as we can see here, there's a fair gap between the LED here and also the record button. So that can fit on anywhere in between them. It's not going to be exactly centered because obviously it'll then cover part of the LED. So if we use this space just here to get it on, then that's going to be ample space and also a decent place to put it as well. And as we can see here, the base of the cold shoe is narrower than this part of the camera at the top. So this part of the camera here, which has got the LED and the button, which would have to come off if it went for repair, this is actually narrower than it. So what that means is by the time that's fixed on the top, we don't have to touch the back part there or the front part here. Another thing we could do in order to get the glue to set very strong is to basically mark off the top of the camera here with maybe a blade, a craft knife or something like that. And it might help to give the glue extra bite when the cold shoe goes on. But to be honest, I'm not gonna do that just now, just in case the whole thing doesn't work out anyway and I have to take it back off and I don't wanna leave the top in a complete mess. But what I will do is prepare the base of the cold shoe a bit more because it's got a quarter 20 brass mount in the bottom here. It might just help if we kind of sand it down a bit and just level that out. And maybe it'll also help to give the base bit a little bit more bite onto the camera with the glow. So I'm just gonna do that for a bit. Now that I've done that, I'm just gonna clean off the base a bit more, just get rid of any loose bits on it. Now that I've prepped and cleaned the base of the cold shoe, I'm just gonna give the top of the E1 here where the cold shoe is gonna go on one last clean. And now I'm ready to glue that onto there. So now it's time to glue the shoe mount on top of the E1. And for this, I'm going to use this, which is Loctite Super Glue, but specifically the gel version. Now, the reason why I'm using this, and I would highly recommend you use the same, is because I've used other glues, not necessarily Loctite ones, but cheaper glues can be very runny. And by the time you put your glue on here, what's gonna happen, it'll start running off the sides and then it'll start making a bit of a mess on top of whatever it is you're gluing anything to. So like I say, this is a gel. So what it does, it kind of goes on fairly neat and doesn't run everywhere. And plus you can kind of apply as much as you want with this as well. Now what I'll do here, I'll just show you the glue after I've put it on the shoe. But the one thing I'm not gonna do is show the process of me putting it on. And the reason for that is I need to concentrate on that and not concentrate on trying to talk and film at the same time. So give me a second. So here is the amount of glue that I'm putting on. And as you can see, I've spread it on here in such a way that I'm leaving a couple of millimeters of gap all around it. Now the reason for that is, is because once it goes on and then gets pressed down, I don't want glue to start spreading all over the top of the camera. So hopefully this will only give like, you know, the most minimal of mess around the edges. So what I'm gonna do now is get on and put this on top of the camera and then I'll come back as soon as it's done. Okay, so as we can see there, there's the shoe mount on. 
and as we can also see hopefully there's not too much of a mess where the actual mount is joining the top of the E1 as far as glue is concerned and such so I'm fairly happy with that well actually I'm very happy with that it's actually quite neat for me to be honest okay so let me just cut away to some examples of this in use and just quickly as you can see here I've actually cut a notch out in the foam on this little case modification that I've done for the Z cam and as you can see it fits in really snug and then comes out really easily as well so we just put that back in and close the case over yeah so there we go that actually all works really well in there as well and if you haven't seen the modification for this case check me video links out and you'll be able to see how we've done that as well okay so to some examples of what you may want to mount on top of your zcam e1 now that you have a cold chill on it as we can see here i've got a small video light on it now it obviously goes without saying here that you cannot put heavy objects on top of it it's just not going to work they'll probably just rip right off but as long as it's something light it should be fine and as you can see here, I'm moving this about no problem. In fact, this will actually tilt like that. Not that I would recommend doing that either, because over time you might just wear it a bit and whatnot. And plus, if you've got something expensive on there and you go like that and it snaps off, you're not going to be happy about that. But if you're doing what I'm doing here, which is just keeping it kind of like locked off and stuff and like basically vertical without angles, I mean, actually saying that, you'd probably get slight angles. So if this were on a tripod, and you would kind of like just doing a couple of little small tilts pans will be fine all day long little tilts they're probably going to be okay as well all right so that's an example of using a small light here's another example and for my second example using a field monitor now obviously in this instance you're going to have to be careful again with weight um you can't go mad with like too much but i would imagine though if you were to put say a five inch monitor on with it being lighter and smaller you might be able to kind of tilt that more and whatnot but at least with this one what you could do you could have it just set simply in front of you maybe you want to do some vloggy type stuff but you need to get like you know a proper picture in front or indeed you could have that the other way around you could be using it as a focus assist but like i say as long as you don't go too heavy with what goes on top it should be fine and this third example will not be pushing the weight limits at all and what it is it's just putting an action cam on the top so as you can see here you can be filming somebody else whilst filming yourself as well so you can be doing q a stuff and whatnot a lot of people like to do that with two small cameras but also you know you may want to turn it round, and actually just for whatever reasons you may want to have like you know two cameras pointing at the same thing or even you might want to put the camera at 90 degrees and have a 90 de 90 degree angle of whatever it is you're filming for whatever reason you would want to put an action cam on top of an E1, you can do that. And to the last example of what you could mount on top of an E1 with a cold shoe, and this is the reason why I've done it, and that is microphones. Because for me personally, I do a lot of um, like dialogue recording and things. Now, whether that's me doing pieces to camera or vloggy type stuff, or whether it's me interviewing people, I like to like get a dead small system together. So this is now perfect. I mean, obviously, I would normally use a pistol grip, you know, when I go out and do these type of things, not this little stand. But you can use what you want to mount the camera on, but, you know, that mic's not going anywhere. So, basically, this is a great reason for it. Now, this is just one example of a microphone. Let me just give you some more examples of, like, you know, the mics that I would put on top. So, this is another example for a microphone that can sit on top. And as you can see, this one's a lot bigger and wider than the previous one. It's also a lot heavier. Now, what it is, this one is one that I'm putting together. Um, I'm basically trying to build a very self-contained binaural type microphone, of which this is like my prototype, as it were, um, or my preliminary build. It's basically just two mics that are being cut up and then all kinds of gubbins put in and whatnot and the capsules and all the rest of it. But the point here is this mic's a lot heavier than the other one, and this is sitting on top fine. I can move it around, do all kinds of stuff. Now, just to another microphone. So this particular microphone system for the E1 may be very interesting to other E1 owners. Um, because as an E1 owner, you'll know 
that this input on the side is not a microphone input, it's a line input. So unfortunately, what it won't do is pre-amplify dynamic microphones to any great degree, and it will not power ECMs and labs and such. So basically what I'm doing here is putting together a microphone system, which is a modular condenser system. So basically what happens is I put some Primo capsules in these little bodies, which then just plug in and out of this, which is just the power supply system uh, for a lavalier. And then that in turn obviously is just plugging straight into the line input. Now, because the Primo capsules that I use are very sensitive and have got a real healthy output, they help drive a real good level into the line input. Now, these Primo capsules that I'm using are absolutely amazing. I don't know if anybody out there uses Primos, but they are absolutely fantastic. In fact, on that point, anyone who does use Primo capsules, if you haven't got a place to source them from, if you go to mikebooster.com, they sell all kinds of Primo stuff there, and they do like a lot of self builds, the, the brilliant microphones basically that they build, but they are a major seller for the Primo capsule. Anyway, so this system here, I will actually be doing a, um, a, like a specific E1, you know, E1 related video about this system because I'm actually building and designing this specifically for the E1, although it will work on other stuff. Anyway, stop rambling. As you can see though, that's going nowhere. I can throw that all over the place. So this is gonna be a really good thing to use when I'm outdoors with just my pistol grip. And on that note, I will now finish with a very practical example of microphones on here outdoors. Okay, so for the last example of a microphone and also the main reason why I've put this shoe mount on top of the E1 and that's to use it like this with like, well, any microphone that I choose but right now I'm using my Sennheiser ME64 which is a fantastic kind of dialogue, vloggy, interviewee type microphone especially at distances like this so what I'm going to do now is just come over to this camera here now, I'm not too sure how close I can get into this because I'm not too sure where I've set focus on this camera. So basically, I've got my little pistol grip system here. Obviously, the E1. There's its cold shoe. Now, what it is, I've got a lighter shock mount on the top. I've got the Sennheiser ME64. And also, I'm using... Uh, the dead cat off a road video micro for the Sennheiser which happens to work amazingly well on this and then obviously I've got an XLR going you know connecting the microphone to the line input now the reason why I can use this very light system like this is because the Sennheiser ME range which is basically anything powered by the K6 power module has a very sensitive and healthy output which is enough to drive the line level input on the E1 granted you'll probably have to raise it a little bit but you don't have to kind of like massively gain it or not because it's already a very healthy output coming from the microphone let me just walk around a little bit as I'm doing this as well now the thing is you know I've kind of like been torn for a while as to whether or not I should do this uh, I did have another arrangement on here which worked very well which was a small kind of uh, double uh, like qu two quarter 20s one on either end of a bar where I could then side mount stuff onto it but as we can see here yeah uh, wait there let me get back closer to the camera because um, that's going to make me look miles away but as we can see here you know this is just absolutely the most stripped down kind of like rig you could do for getting decent dialogue as well as other things that you may want to put on top of this actual you know on top of the, the camera after doing this little modification okay so i think this is probably gonna have done it all now um in, you know this is well enough proof like you know as to how good or how versatile uh, throwing this little you know shoe mount on the top is uh, well it is for me definitely because it allows me to start doing this and getting out very light now without using a big kit bag and stuff okay Okay, so if you're interested in any more of the stuff that I've done with the E1 and any other kind of like upcoming videos with the E1, go to www.zcame1.com and there is where I'm going to be putting all my E1 videos or any videos that I do using the E1. Okay, so I think the last thing that remains for me to say right now is eh, thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.